Kelly D to the front of the auditorium, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church here in Winter Haven, Florida. If you are with us here this morning, we're happy that you're here. Or if you're online, we're happy to be worshiping with you also. The month of December, where we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to start the heart of worship service with some live music from the First Presbyterian Praise Band. Come, spend. Kingdom of eternal life. 
Thank you, Praise Band. I'd like to add my welcome to Bob's this morning. It's great to have you with us, joining us by Facebook Live or here in-house. We do say welcome to God's house and welcome to worship together today. In-house, we're going to greet one another with a little wave. So at home, greet one another with a hug and kiss of peace. Let's stand and greet one another. What's up, Dr. Negley? us adorn the worship place today and we just praise God together. Different announcements. Another thank you to Kelly Ivey. So everybody here clap for Kelly Ivey. Do you want to know the reason to clap for Kelly Ivey? Kelly was the coordinator of Come to the Stable and our Living Nativity Stroll. How many folks here in-house made it to that event last night? Probably two-thirds in-house we had no way of counting the crowd last night because the crowd was never in one place. But it was probably the greatest celebration of the living nativity we've had in the last decade. It was wonderful. So thank you to Kelly. Thank you to the people who constructed, to the musicians, to the hospitality folks, to the people who tore it down. It was an incredible night. So I'm not predicting the future, but I could see another stroll somewhere in the future for us. So Kelly did an incredible job. She got the animals secured, which was the first thing in a long line of things to make it a wonderful evening. So thank you to everybody who took part. I think we truly told the story of Christmas in wonderful ways last night. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Next Sunday, I need you all to decide to hang around. We'll have some bottled water or something. At 10.30 next week, we're having a congregational meeting, and we do need to get a quorum present for that. We will have a Facebook Live connection, and we'll have somebody monitoring Facebook Live. As we found from the first congregational meeting that was hybrid, I can't stand up here, watch everything happening on Facebook, and also watch 70 or 80 folks in the congregation. So we'll monitor that a little bit better this time. 
we need 101 folks for a quorum, two items of business. One is Gene Strang, retired, moved away to Vero Beach, and that left a one-year term for an elder. And the nominating committee has a, has a recommendation for that one-year term. The second is the associate pastor nominating committee. The congregation must elect the committee to select the new associate pastor. And so there is a slate that you'll find in the tower chimes that will hit your house in the next day or two electronically or by mail. So look at the slate, study that, and we'll come and they'll present that slate for the Associate Pastor Nominating Committee. That's next Sunday morning, the 20th of December at 1030 here in the sanctuary and also hybrid. So hopefully you can join us for that. Christmas Eve services, we are planning 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. We've got some wonderful plans for lessons and carols that night. You do need to make your reservation. Five o'clock, I think, is at capacity. There are still about 20 slots available for seven. As you look around the sanctuary, a slot represents one of these green tags. So if you're a family of one, you have a space to sit. If you're a family of six, you have a space to sit. We just want to socially distance and we want to be responsible to one another. So if you're planning to come to Christmas Eve, you'll need a reservation just for this year, I hope. And so please contact us, go online and follow the instructions there. And thank you to the musicians. First, I want to thank all those folks and the folks in the booth who are here every single week. Please join me in that. And at the holiday time, we've reactivated some of the college crew. Tammy is here today, and Dylan is here. So let's thank them for their special participation. Now, this is not an audition-only group. If you feel that you're led to be a part of the praise band, contact us, and we'll work you into the rotation too. But we've got an excellent group here that helps us to praise and worship God. And again, the folks up in the booth, they do a tremendous job of in-house sound and of letting our worship literally happen around the world. And so we really appreciate that. Great to have all of you with us in whatever way. Let's keep praising God together. You could have come like a mighty storm With all the strength of a hurricane You could have come like a forest fire With the power of heaven in your flame but you came like a winter snow You were quiet and soft and slow Falling from the sky in the night To the earth below Oh, you could have swept in tidal wave or an ocean to ravish our hearts you could have come through like a roaring flood to wipe away all the things that we've scarred but you came like a winter snow you were quiet and soft and slow Falling from the sky in the night To the earth below No, your voice wasn't in a bush came like a winter snow you were quiet 
and soft and slow Falling from the sky in the night to the earth below So I look around today, I think I see one young disciple, maybe he'll come down and help me today. Wonderful. Oh, good, I get two. Come on down. Thank you all for being here last night for Living Nativity. We had a wonderful time, and I appreciate all that you did to help us. Now, are you going to help me today? I mentioned last week that we keep time in church with an Advent wreath. Can you remember what number Sunday this is in Advent? You're right. You're right. It's the third. Now, this is the tricky Sunday. So, we lit a purple candle a couple weeks ago. And it's easy because that purple candle's on the bottom. Then we moved up to another purple candle. We could reach that one. Which one do you think we're going to light today? No, we're going to hold the white one. That's going to be a little bit later. And it's a trick question to everybody. Because the Advent wreath for hundreds of years has had four candles around the outside and one candle in the middle. And we're moving towards the white one. But we go purple, purple. We should go purple, pink, white, don't you think? Now, for some reason, we stop in the third week and we go to pink. And I think this might be the reason. We get so busy getting ready for Christmas that sometimes we're not having fun. I don't know, you all are a little bit younger, but I know at my age, you have to decorate the house and work with the family on that. And then you've got to make a Christmas list. And then you've got to shop down that Christmas list. Then you've got to figure out what things you have to send and what things you can take. Then you've got to work in some type of holiday party for the people you work with. And then you say, oh my goodness, we may have to buy gifts for each other. Then you say, what are the events in town that I want to go to? Do I want to go to a living nativity? Do I want to go to a boat parade? Do I want to go to a party? And before you know it, Christmas just isn't that much fun. So on the Advent wreath, we talk about different things with the candles. We talked a couple weeks ago about waiting. It's a long time to wait. Then, last week, if you remember a little bit, we mentioned the word peace. Because sometimes they talk about the second week being a peace candle. Well, that pink one in the church, purple means prepare. We do that in Lent and Advent. And pink, when you see it in the church, means celebration or joy. So today is the Joy Sunday. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because sometimes we've got to stop and remember to be joyful. And on the Advent wreath it does that. So all these years I've been lighting Advent wreaths. All these years we go purple, purple, and I think it's time for another purple. But the church says, nope, stop for pink right now. We're going to remind you of something special. Then we'll get back to purple next week as we do our final preparation. Then on Christmas Eve it's white and that means the next day is a celebration of the birth of Jesus. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the hand sanitizer so we can take care of that. Can you help me light the wreath today? Perfect. Well, I'm going to squirt, grab this, and go up and get some light from the candles. Then I'm going to go back and get some light from the candle again. And then I'm going to find where Dylan hid the lighter. 
so I don't have to go back a third time. There we go. There we go. So what's the first candle? Mm. Purple. Let's do the front one, okay? Do you want to help us, Raymond? Let's do that per first purple, yep. So go up, now twist it a little bit, and I'm going to put the wick out because we're having a little hard time on this one. Great. Now, we did another purple at one time. Let's do that one over there. Oh, I had to come back and, oh, you got it. Okay, I thought we had lost it. Now, what do we say today? Are we doing another purple? Mm. No, we're doing pink. You got it. I'll put that flame out just a little more. Did we get it? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Y'all want to squirt a little quick there? And how many Sundays left until Christmas? How many more colored candles are on that wreath? Two. Well, Christmas Eve is, is the white one. So one Sunday, next Sunday, then we'll come back on Christmas Eve, the 24th, and we'll finish lighting and it'll be ready for Christmas. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and talk to God in prayer. God, we thank you that we can prepare and we can pause in celebration. We thank you that in the midst of all the things that we're about, we can also take time to remember this is the celebration of the birth of our Savior. God, I thank you for the Advent season. I thank you for the coming of Christmas. And I thank you that we're able to tell with joy the story of what you've done for us in Jesus Christ. Remind us of that every day. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Reverend Sarah told me to remind you, we do have Sunday school in the next building, and we've got a teacher over there who would love to help you celebrate a little bit more of the season. So if you'd like, you can go on back and head on across. Thanks for coming down. patient is God. We run around trying to do everything our way, and God just waits. We try to buy life's joy and happiness, and God waits. We hurt others and walk away from those in need, and yet God waits. God waits upon hearing our heartfelt prayers and cries for help. So God may touch each of us with forgiveness and new life. Come, join me as we pray to the one who waits to hear from each of us this morning as we confess our sins together. God, in whom all hearts find welcome, we confess that we may still need to make room in our hearts for the Christ child. As we count down the days until Christmas, Forgive us for viewing the coming birth as yet another event in our crowded lives. Help us to pause each day with a moment of praise for the wonderful gift of our salvation. Help us to remember the joy that we have found in receiving and to share that joy in giving to others. Help us in the midst of our busy lives to welcome the one who always has time for us and embrace the peace and purpose he offers. We offer our prayers in our Lord and Savior's name. Forgive us, O Lord. Amen. Be at peace and celebrate with joy for those who are broken, 
we are mended. Separated from others, we are made one. Longing to serve, we are sent forth. Thanks be to God, for we in Christ Jesus are forgiven. Amen. For our scripture lesson today, we're making it to the gospel according to Luke. I'll be reading today a few verses selected in Luke chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I invite you to join as we think of God's promise to us and hear God's word. In Luke 1, verse 26, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. As he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by his words. She pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. Picking up the story again in verse 46, Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. Continuing the story in Luke chapter 2, with verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord appeared before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I told the younger disciples a little bit about an Advent wreath. I guess I would ask you now, what's your experience with an Advent wreath? How many folks here made an Advent wreath, maybe out of styrofoam, that you stuck some greenery in and then placed the candles in? Has anybody here done that? Let me see your hands. Okay. My generation, that's what we did at church. Then we took the wreath home. We probably had to change out the greenery at least once during 30 days or it was a fire hazard. How many of you have an Advent wreath at your home now? A little less than I had anticipated. We don't have one in our house anymore. We've kind of replaced home Advent wreaths with nativity sets. Well, Sunday school classes when I was growing up were a place to explore Advent wreaths. Church fellowship suppers sometime became the Advent wreath workshop as we created them. So long before I ever journeyed off to seminary, I knew about Advent. The season of Advent, we know, stretches over the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. And the Advent wreath, as we've talked with the younger disciples, is kind of our countdown calendar. The liturgical color for Advent over the years has been purple. And purple is a color for preparation. You know that we light a candle each week, a purple candle, a purple candle, a pink candle, and then back to purple. The pink candle is the candle for joy. So we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ. We need to be reminded that the Christmas season is really about joy. And the first person that I think who had to be reminded of that was a young woman named Mary. You see, when the good news of the birth of Jesus came to her, joy was not her first response. She was fearful. She was concerned. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. 
and the virgin's name was Mary. He came and he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. That too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mary needed to be reminded that Christmas is about joy. There was lots for her to be concerned about. She was told by an angel that she was going to have a baby before she had a husband. This young virgin was just starting to find her way in the world when all of a sudden she was told that she was going to play a major role in the salvation of humanity. A little scary, you might say. A little confusing, I'm sure. But soon she saw the joy in the season. You see, the angel who had told her about the wondrous birth also told her to get up and go to the hill country, to her kinswoman, one of her relatives, a lady named Elizabeth, who was six months pregnant with her own miraculous pregnancy. And as the good news of the promised Savior was coming into focus, Mary voiced her joy. Luke records it like this. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he's looked with favor upon the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Again, the word of the Lord, the Magnificat. Thanks be to God. You see, when Mary's dreams had become God's dreams for her. When Mary saw that she was a part of God's loving plan for all humanity, her spirit rejoiced. At Christmas, once we get over the fear, we realize it's about joy. That same thing happened out in the fields of Palestine on a holy night. After a heavily pregnant Mary and her betrothed Joseph made a ninth month journey to Bethlehem, the joy of the first Christmas was announced to some of the locals. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord. Can you imagine your response to an angel splitting the night as you are sitting in your backyard on a cool December evening? Can you imagine your response as that angel not only embodies the glory of God, but also turns to you and speaks to you? Can you imagine? Luke says that the shepherds were terrified. That would sum it up for me if I had a night encounter with an angel. But the angel continued, don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, the Messiah, the Lord. The Christmas message is joy invading a fearful world. 
At Christmas, we Christians, we church people, prepare for the celebration of the birth of Christ by lighting a candle each week. A purple candle for waiting, a purple candle for peace, a pink candle for joy. Mary rejoiced when she realized that God's gift of salvation was coming through her and into the world. The fear of the shepherds was dispelled as they heard of good news of great joy for all the people. Christmas is a time for joy. We wish people a merry Christmas. We wish them a cheerful, a festive, a joyful time. Very merry. About five years ago now, Teresa and I received in the mail the printed invitation to our son Thomas's wedding to Laura. The invitation was a typical invitation. It announced the details of the upcoming ceremony. Right there on the piece of paper was the date, the time, the place. This invitation was a little different and reflected maybe Thomas's sense of humor. Because after all the particulars of the dates, times, and place on the invitation, it included a note that after the ceremony, merriment to follow. Merriment. Joy. At this time of the year, we wish people a merry Christmas because that's our wish. And that's God's promise to us. This past Friday, I spent an hour standing outside of the Publix at Southeast Plaza. From 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock this past Friday, I was a Salvation Army bell ringer. Every year, my Rotary Club volunteers to man the kettle at that particular Publix where one of our club members is the manager. And I actually look forward to doing my shift at the kettle once a year for the Salvation Army. I enjoy supporting that nice local benevolence and a good cause, and I also enjoy conducting a little personal study every year as I stand there ringing the bell next to the Salvation Army kettle. Let me tell you the results of my surveys over the years. Every year I find that lots of little children enjoy dropping change into the kettle. I watch as the kids ask and parents and grandparents give them change and dollar bills and they move kind of quickly over to the kettle, excited about making a Christmas donation for the poor people. I've also seen every year as I ring the bell that lots of adults happily drop something into that kettle as a donation to help people who are less fortunate. And this year, like most years that I've manned my post ringing the bell at Publix, I'm proud to say that every single First Presbyterian Church member whom I greeted by name as soon as they came to within bell hearing range dutifully dropped by my kettle and put a donation in. Now, I don't man that kettle as a donation extortion technique. I man that kettle because at least for one hour a year, I am free to ring that bell as loudly as I can and to wish every single person who comes out of that store or from the parking lot or down that sidewalk a Merry Christmas. This year, I think I wished over 150 people a Merry Christmas in the context of an hour and even behind their masks, I could tell that almost every one of them was smiling as they wished me the same. There's a lot of preparation that happens at the Christmas season. We dream dreams, visions of sugar plums dance in our heads. We stay awake to see if those dreams will come true. We prepare house and hearth and ready ourselves for the celebration. And we pause and we ponder and we praise God for true joy. Like Mary, like some shepherds, we find that fear can be washed away by the joy of God's gift of salvation. Friends, it is true. There is good news of great joy for all the people. Claim it. 
God has made you this wonderful gift to the world. God claims you just as you are. God saves you in the person of Jesus Christ. And if you need to hear it again, please believe it. God loves you. Get ready for a truly Merry Christmas. It's right around the corner. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we turn our eyes to our Lord, will you join with me in prayer this morning? We thank you, O God, for all of those in Scripture who have pointed to Christ. From your prophets Elijah and Isaiah, for prophets like Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John. We thank you for those messengers and dreams who announced the coming of the Emmanuel's birth. Gabriel speaking to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, as well as the wise men, we hear your call. We thank you, too, for those in our lives who have pointed us to Christ, those pastors and teachers, strangers and friends. Give us eyes today to see him among those whom we may overlook, those who are oppressed, imprisoned, brokenhearted, or beaten down. God, our helper, we thank you for keeping our lives always in your care and protection and pray for any and all who are in harm's way, for those walking in the midst of danger by choice or vocation, like our public service officers, the police, firefighters, emergency responders, healthcare workers, and our military. For those who are treading on a slippery path, those suffering from depression, addiction, or mental illness. For those who are exhausted and seeking relief, our teachers, students, parents, and the school systems. We pray also for the world and their nations, especially for those places where violence is wreaking havoc upon human lives and your good creation. We pray for global solidarity solidarity, as we continue to grapple with this raging pandemic. And for those who face any other obstacles, we lift to you in this silence.
Be our guardian and guide, we pray, setting our feet on your paths of righteousness and peace. Help us to be agents of your love and care to all who are suffering. We pray especially for wise discernment of our nation's elected leadership and that they might work together constructively to find ways to aid those most afflicted in this time. Keep in your tender mercy and care, O rock of our salvation, those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, those recuperating from illness, surgery, or accidents. Protect not only those we love and ourselves, but also this whole wide world you love and wish joy among. Strengthen us to give our testimony this season of how Christ releases and sets free, how he turns ashes into garlands, how he repairs and builds up what is ruined, so that we too can and will point others to Jesus, the babe in the manger, the light of the world. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us and his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh 
Like most of the birthday parties that we celebrate, the birth has already happened. It's just an annual occasion to remember the joy. The birth of Jesus is the same way. The invitation came to us in our lives and to our world in the person of Jesus. God said, into the darkness comes light. I am sending my son a savior. And there was a postscript there, merriment to follow. It's called life. Enjoy this season. Enjoy the salvation that has come to you. Tell every person that you see this week that you wish them a Merry Christmas because you want that joy to be present in their lives too. Let's go out and celebrate. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.